Oh, howdy again, folks. Listen, I wanted to throw a Civil War video at you today with a question. And I'm going to propose a theory, a hypothesis about Pickett's Charge that was fought on this day in 1863. It is the most talked about battle in the Civil War. Was it tactical necessity or just ego gone wild by General Lee, as historians will have you believe? Let's have a look at it. Now it's often said that Lee's order for Pickett's Charge, given on this day in 1863 during this penultimate day of the Battle of Gettysburg, was the worst order in American military history. Now whether it was or not isn't important, but it is universally spoon-fed to us by so-called historians that this was Lee's biggest mistake. It is considered a rash, ego-driven error by a demigod convinced of his infallibility of his army. Well, if one studies Lee and his life, it's hard to swallow that this most humble of men was rash, let alone ego-driven. But let's put that aside and look at the decision resulting in the singularly most talked about battlefield engagement of the Civil War. What if Pickett's Charge was ordered for an entirely different reason than historians want us to believe? What if it was a tactical necessity for Lee to save his army? Hear me out. Lee's sitting in his tent after day two at Gettysburg. It's dark and noisy with the terrible moans of the wounded and the clatter of messengers coming and going at his headquarters. Sitting in the candlelight, what does Lee know? Well, the evidence is all around him. His army has just endured a horrific day of fighting. Despite many near breakthroughs, for two days he has been unable to crack the federal line on Cemetery Ridge. He has lost this second day and at a terrible cost. He knows his army is pretty beat up at this point. He's sitting below an entrenched enemy of sizable power that he can reasonably assume by now has gathered its full force and has considerable reserves. It's not inconceivable, as smart as Lee is, for him to now know that he's in a precarious position. If the Federals counterattack in the morning, not only does he have a vulnerable position, but he is weak. He has to be thinking choices. Do I retreat or attack? If he retreats, he's vulnerable from the rear by an army with fresh troops. If he attacks, while having to pay a heavy price and perhaps far greater than he realized at the time, he can exhaust or do enough damage to the Federals to prevent a potentially destructive counterattack, then retreat safely into Virginia with a still sizable and deadly army. So he decides to attack to prevent that counterattack actually saving his army from destruction. It makes military sense and Lee was no dummy. In that light, not only was Pickett's charge necessary, it was his only real choice to save his army given its condition and position. Now history shows that despite Lincoln's enraged prodding for Meade to press the Confederates on the 4th, Meade considered his own army too exhausted to mount a counterattack, justifying Lee's sacrifice of the men during Pickett's charge. Now historians will counter this hypothesis of Lee's decision based on his own words reportedly said as his troops returned from the battlefield. Distraught and almost weeping, after Pickett's charge he says from his Mount Traveler, this is all my fault, quote unquote. Well, that's an interesting admission for him to make, except for the fact he never said it. It is but another Civil War legend. It is a famous line from the Civil War spouted in almost every book written about the battle. Yet there is absolutely no empirical record that Lee ever said it. Alas, victors write the history, and it makes for a more patriotic read to diminish the Southern foe even in the face of contradictory evidence. So there you go, folks. Was it tactical necessity or rash ego? Pickett's charge, food for thought.